The Dream Kingdom. Once upon a time, there lived a young man named George. He lived upon a hillside with his old father. They grew fields, which provided them a fairly comfortable life. However, others didn't think so. Look at their shabby clothes. <laughs> If they expanded their fields, they'd have better money. Better house. Better everything. They're so odd. <laughs> the townspeople mocked George and his father behind their backs. Thank you, George. Say, why don't you grow more fields? You'd have an easier life. Or better clothes. Well, our harvest is enough for us, and I love having leisure time like watching sunsets and birds. <laughs> yes, while work is necessary, taking it slow to appreciate life is important too. The townspeople couldn't understand this. Watching sunsets, birds, What's the point in that? Strange. They're living in dreamland. Ho, ho, ho. George and his father weren't strange. They were different from the townspeople. Every day, they would watch and listen as nature spread out its gloriousness. George, don't listen to those people. Give attention to the rustling trees and the warm sun. Let your appreciation for life grow. I know, Dad. It's because you've taught me this. I feel so content with my life. George could understand the birds, the way the trees breathe, and the Earth's small surprises. Others don't understand this magnificence. It's silent and yet roars. But sadly, the years took someone with them. I miss you, Dad. His father had been the only friend in his life. Every day, George would work, smile, and just be. But no one could feel the loneliness inside him. <sighs> the sky's beautiful. Dad would have liked to. See it too. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> George was dazzled by the princess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Catch. Catch. Oh, what? Wait. The princess just kept swinging amidst the stars, throwing George a rose every time she swung back to Earth. He was too smitten to speak. <laughs> huh? No! W wait! Eight! Huh! A dream? Huh! What are these? George was shocked to see himself surrounded by dozens of roses. But wasn't it just a dream? Maybe the birds dropped them? <sighs> he worked hard that evening. But at night, he had the same dream. Again? <laughs> Hi, George! It's you, in my dream. Wait! You know my name? <laughs> of course I do. I'm in your dream. I'm Princess Sadira. Pleasure. So, what dream is this? Well, it's got everything you think about. Like those fish over there. And those floating apple pies. Ah, my dessert. I love apple pie too. I've visited many people's dreams but it's the first time I've visited someone who loves a lot of what I do, too.
Why do you like it? Hmm. Come. Woo! Oh, wow! Oh, how adorable! I know, right? <sighs> That's why I love it all. And you? I feel the same way. George and the princess would meet each other every night in his dreams. Over time, the two grew close and fell in love. <sighs> this isn't fair. I can only meet you in dreams. What if I told you to find me? Find you? Where? Do you really love me? Sadira, I love you more than anything. Tell me, hurry, it's almost day. Meet me in the kingdom of dreams. Where? It's where the clouds touch the earth. Find it. Find me. Sadira. Oh, dream kingdom. All right, Sadira. I'll find you. George immediately began his travels. He visited different places and met many people. It took him a long time until... Oh, I found it! As he leapt forward with much excitement, he passed by a thick forest. No! What was that? He crept into the forest and saw an old man with a long silver beard who had been tied up by two huge creatures. Untie me, you brutes! Stop struggling. Our king will be delighted to see you. <laughs> Leave me! George wanted to help the poor man. He looked around but could only find a branch. This'll have to do. <sighs> Yeah! Huh? Who's this guy? Why is he pointing a twig at us? Is he challenging us with a tiny branch? <laughs> oh, please, help me! Help me! The force seemed to understand what he wanted, for quite suddenly, things started happening. Huh? Whoa! You little... Uh, my foot! What? George was bewildered at everything, but he untied the old man and they hurried out of the forest. What were those things? They're underlings of the evil king of reality. King of reality? Yes, he hates me. Oh, right. Let me introduce myself. I am the King of Dreams, and you, young man, must have a really good heart for the forest to have saved you like that. Wh what's that for? You'll see. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I'm George, by the way. I know. Come. George stepped through the opening, and the clouds closed around him. Wow! Cool, right? Let's go! The Kingdom of Dreams was nothing he could have imagined. That's where we get our magical stardust from. And over there is where all of our tired dreams come back from rest after their work. And that's our research department, so we can see what new fairy tales you humans come up with. Wow! Hmm, what are those? Those are troubles. They work for me and make sure everything in Dream Kingdom goes smoothly and well. Just like a dream. Just like a good dream. We handle nightmares too, you know. They soon reached the castle. The inside of the walls seemed to be lined with small, shiny baubles. 
There's something in them. Oh, those are the dreams. They're currently rested. They entered a huge room which had a large controller with beeping buttons and strange levers. This is how I control the dreams. There are actually three kinds. The good dreams for good people. And nightmares? For bad people? Yes. And dream goblins. I like to have a little fun sometimes. What are dream goblins? Do you ever dream like you want to run away but can't? As if you're stuck or you're running really slow? Oh yes, I dislike that. Well, these little mischief makers are actually holding you down while you sleep and dream. And then they run away before you wake up. But I won't let them come next to you ever again. These are all nightmares. Scary witches and huge monsters. I send them to people with evil hearts to teach them a lesson. Like this kid. He bullied a younger child for his lunch. So this is what I'm gonna do. Sandwich monster. <laughs> I'm sending you down to Charlie. And now, we watch. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no! Stay away! <laughs> Poor Charlie. But he'll never steal a sandwich again. Exactly. These are the good dreams. All my prettiest fairies and horses, cute puppies and rainbow ponies. Oh, wow, they really are. Ah, princess. Ah, yes, Sadira. I sent her to you when you started feeling lonely. May I speak to her? Of course. Let me just get her out. Hmm. Here. Sadira, it really is you. The two were so happy to be reunited. They just held each other closely. You may stay out for now, Sadira. Why don't you show George around until then? And so, Sadira and George roamed to the Dream Kingdom, chattering away happily in each other's arms. They visited many places and dreams. They had been out for quite a while, and the king was growing restless. It's almost time for Sadira to return. Drubble 354. Go bring Sadira and George. The Drubble traveled all over Dream Kingdom and finally found them. What? Oh no! Okay, Drubble. What's wrong? The king needs to send me to another dreamer, and you home. No, I'll ask the king to set you free. The two traveled back, and George went straight up to the king. Your Highness, I'm in love with Sadira, and I would like to take her as my wife. What? But Sadira is the best dream I have here. Please, I beg you. Please, your highness. The king looked at the two lovers and finally gave in. All right. I owe you this much at least for saving my life. Sadira may leave with you. There, when you pass through the portal, you'll be human. Your highness, would you be so kind as to present us with a palace? I have only a cottage for my princess. I don't mind that, George. You are special and deserve only the best. Hmm. I cannot grant you a real palace, but an invisible one. That means only the two of you would be able to see it. The king presented them with a folded map. 
and happily went through the Dream Kingdom portal, arriving at George's cottage. Let's unfold the map. The map was large and folded over many times. But once unfolded, the cottage disappeared and a tall, magnificent castle emerged. Welcome home, my princess. You are my home, George. I wish you'd know that that reality is enough of a dream come true for me. George and the princess were happy living in the dreamland. However, over time, George started to understand that mixing his reality and invisible dream palace wasn't a good thing. I can see I'm eating cake, but I know I'm eating bread. Sidira, do you mind if we close the map? George, I've wanted that from the start. Just because I was a dream princess before, doesn't mean I want to live a dream. I understand that now. Real life, if appreciated well, is truly the greatest dream we can live. I had forgotten my father's teachings. I love you, Sadira. And I love you, George. Sadira and George now began living a real life, something George had almost forgotten for a dream. Dreams are beautiful, but imaginary. They cannot be compared to the beauty of reality. So, the next time you see a tiny flower, or a beautiful sunset, or the person you love, remember to appreciate the real beauty of life.